Superficially, the molecules pyridine and pyrrole look fairly similar. They're both aromatic, they're both heterocycles, they both contain carbon and nitrogen. But these two aromatic heterocycles are fundamentally different. In this video, we'll look at the differences in structure and reactivity between pyridine and pyrrole and trace these back to differences in the nature of the nitrogen atom within these two structures. Pyridine consists of a six-membered aromatic ring. It's very similar to benzene, it just includes a nitrogen instead of a CH at one of the positions of benzene. In thinking about how resonance relates to this molecule, one thing we can notice is that the carbon-nitrogen double bond is polarized toward nitrogen. It kind of acts like an internal electron withdrawing group in a sense. We can push electrons toward nitrogen to generate resonance structures of pyridine. And within these resonance structures, we find positive charge within the carbons on the ring. In particular, we find this charge on the ortho and para positions with respect to the nitrogen atom. An orbital energy diagram for pyridine is shown at the bottom of this slide and helps us see that the molecule is indeed aromatic with all three of its pi bonding molecular orbitals filled and all three of its pi anti-bonding molecular orbitals empty. We've lost the degeneracy of benzene because of the presence of the nitrogen atom within this structure. As suggested by the importance of these three alternative resonance forms, pyridine is polarized in such a way that there's greater electron density near the nitrogen than there is near the carbons of the molecule. As a consequence, the dipole moment vector of pyridine points toward the nitrogen atom. Put another way, there's partial negative charge in the true structure near the nitrogen atom and partial positive charge on the opposite side of the molecule nearer to the carbon atoms. One final point to make about pyridine is that the nitrogen atom in this molecule is an N2 or two connected nitrogen. This means that the lone pair on pyridine is not part of the pi system. That's why we don't see that pair of electrons within the orbital energy diagram here. The three pairs of electrons represented here correspond to the three pairs of electrons in double bonds within the structure. Parole is somewhat different. Once again, the orbital energy diagram for this molecule illustrates that it is an aromatic molecule with all of its bonding molecular orbitals filled and all of its anti-bonding molecular orbitals empty. Once again, we've lost the degeneracy of something like the cyclopentadienyl anion with a carbon here instead of nitrogen because of the presence of this nitrogen atom. And so there is one distinct homo in this molecule and one distinct lumo. In this molecule, the nitrogen atom has the appearance of an electron donating group, and we can generate resonance structures by starting electron flow from the lone pair on nitrogen. In all four of these alternative resonance forms, we find negative charge on the carbons within the ring and positive charge on the nitrogen atom, which makes sense as the nitrogen atom has donated a pair of electrons toward the carbons. An important consequence of this donation is that the dipole moment of parole points in the opposite direction, from the nitrogen atom toward the carbon atoms. Put another way, there's partial positive charge in the vicinity of the nitrogen atom and partial negative charge in the vicinity of the carbons. A key structural difference between pyridine and parole is that the nitrogen atom in parole is now not an N2 nitrogen, but an N3 nitrogen. It's a three-connected nitrogen whose lone pair is now part of the pi system. This pair of electrons does contribute to the pi electron count and does appear in the pi molecular orbitals. Now let's look at parole and pyridine side by side. The resonance structures of parole with negative charge on the carbon atoms emphasize that parole is an electron rich ring. The aromatic carbons are rich in electrons as evidenced by this red area in the electrostatic potential map. This has a few important implications we should expect parole to be a better nucleophile than benzene, for example, because it's more electron-rich. It has less of an issue giving electrons away because of its greater electron density on these carbons. We can also see this effect in the energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital. This pair of electrons is higher in energy than the highest occupied molecular orbital of benzene. This means that this pair of electrons is more apt to be donated to an electrophile or an acid than the pair of electrons in benzene. Pyridine, on the other hand, is an electron-poor ring, and the resonance structures with positive charge on carbons and the electrostatic potential map emphasize this. The light blue and green regions near the carbon atoms of this molecule emphasize that the carbons of the ring are electron-poor or electron-deficient. 
This makes the molecule a better electrophile than benzene, or a worse nucleophile, depending on your perspective. And we can actually see this in both the HOMO energy and the LUMO energy. The LUMO energy of pyridine is lower than it would be in benzene. This makes the molecule a stronger electrophile or electron acceptor than benzene because it's more apt to accept electrons into this lower energy unfilled orbital than benzene would be to accept electrons into its LUMO. And so this contrast helps us see why pyridine and pyrrole are fundamentally different heterocycles. Pyrrole is electron rich. This makes it apt to react as a nucleophile. Pyridine is electron poor. This makes it apt to act as an electrophile. And we can see the manifestations of these effects in both the resonance structures that we looked at on the last slide and the molecular orbital energies, specifically the frontier orbital energies for the HOMO and LUMO. In the next video, we'll generalize the idea of electron-rich and electron-poor heterocycles. Noticing, for example, that in parole, we can look at the N3 nitrogen as an example of an electron donating group. This is according to what we've talked about previously in videos on substituted benzenes and conjugated systems, this is an electron donating group by resonance. And likewise, the C in double bond we can think of as an electron withdrawing group by resonance based on what we've talked about previously. Recognizing these types of groups within aromatic heterocycles is really the key to identifying electron-rich and electron-poor rings in general.